Hey everyone, Fusemite coming at ya. Last week, we took a very quick look at how you can get started using render streaming and taking a look at the specific examples that are provided by Unity to kind of quickly get you started and working with the render streaming examples. In this video, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into how you can actually tweak these examples, both on the client side as well as within Unity in and of itself, so that you can kind of start customizing the data flows that are going back and forth between the browser and Unity. And real quick, before we dive into the meat of this video, one thing I'd love to know is let's assume that you have the ability to deploy a render streaming application scalably around the world. If you had that ability, what would be something that you would build and how would that be different from what you're building today? I'd love to continue that conversation down in the comments below. So to start with, let's first take a look at the client side of things. Now the client is open source and available for a download on the Unity GitHub repo. And you can find that more specifically here. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below but under the web app section. So this folder represents all the code that is responsible for communicating with the back end or between the front end and the back end. And it also holds the code for your web server. And that was what we dockerized in our previous video. So knowing that I've gone ahead and pulled that code here into Sublime with a couple modifications uh, that we can go ahead and take a look at. So first, to start up this web server, it's all based on Node and NPM. So quite simply, you can call the start function and we can specify that we wanna use WebSocket. Once that has spun up, you'll see that you have a URL here, which just happens to be your local IP address. We can go ahead and pop that into our browser here. Try that out. This is an HTML page that gets pre-populated and we saw this in our previous video. Similarly, there's a video player sample that we saw in the previous video. What that maps to here locally is under your public folder, we have an index.html. So as you can see here, this is our render streaming sample, simple HTML file here. There's JavaScript that's associated with it. There's CSS that's associated with it. Similarly, for our video player, we have an index.html page here, and this is the code that gets rendered out. The majority of the actual implementation, though, really happens within the JavaScript files. So starting with first the main JavaScript file, which is what gets pulled in from HTML, you can see that there's quite a few listeners that are made available here from showing the play buttons to clicking play buttons to instantiating the buttons, for example. All of that gets kind of controlled here. Then you have the video player, which is responsible for actually setting up the data streams for WebRTC, setting up that signaling so that you can map that between Unity and the browser. And that's all configured through this video player here, primarily through this setup connection function. So what you see here is an RTC peer connection, which is responsible for setting everything that we want to send. So for, for starters, you'll have a data signal that or data channel that's created and that is named data. You might have seen this previously in Unity when we have our web browser input component and it had already been pre-populated with the data channel mapped to data. Uh, similarly here on this video player.js script, we actually, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that we have three streams that are set up. So you have the two video streams. So one for that small camera up at the top and another one for the main camera that takes up the middle. And then you have just the one audio source that is rendered out of Unity. All, all of these in place, they can go ahead and then create an offer from this data channel and then create a session description that gets mapped through the whole web server signaling process between Unity and the browser so that they can make sure that they're negotiating on the same terms and understand the data that's going back and forth. And this is where that all is controlled, which means that at least on the client side, if we wanna make any updates, this is exactly the place that we do that. So what I've gone ahead and done is created a MetaMask folder in my project. As you can probably guess by the name, that's where I eventually wanna go with this is to be able to do remote streaming with MetaMask. And in here, what I've gone ahead and done, I've just copied the video player example and then just started tweaking it a little bit. So in this specific scenario, what I've gone ahead and done is same data channel that's created, 
and I'm also uh, starting to tweak the on message. So the way this will work because it's a data channel is you can send messages from the client to the to the Unity component, uh, which happens with a send message function that's actually located here at the bottom, which goes ahead and does that over this data channel. Similarly, from Unity, you have the ability to send data from Unity to the browser. So in the case of MetaMask, let's say you generate some data on the browser, you can use this data channel to send messages back and forth to communicate to the game what is happening with, within Ethereum. So I think that's incredibly powerful. The second thing here is to simplify the example in and of itself. I've actually just kind of brought this back down to one video stream, one audio stream, and that's it. The last thing that I did is when you are setting up the video streams, you will be getting a local stream uh, source that is responsible for, uh, that you get out of the web server from, to, to kind of communicate how you're sending videos. And on the on track function, I just simply go in ahead and instead of the complicated logic that they had for switching between video streams, just if you get a video, attach the local stream to, or add the track to the local stream, and then set the local stream to be the video source object, and that will get your video up and running. So fairly simple changes, but this just, I, I wanted to go ahead uh, and, and illustrate kind of what you would need to do to kind of start tweaking the client side of things to really map to whatever you build on the back end. Speaking of the back end, let's go ahead and switch over to Unity here. And similarly in this project, I have a MetaMask scene so that I know that it corresponds at least. And again, based off of our video player scene, what I went ahead and did is we have this render streaming camera I've gone ahead and disabled it because we're, we're no longer using that for, for data or for, for the camera, right? We, I just have kept things simple. We have only one camera stream. There's our camera streamer, there's the audio streamer, that's it. On our render streaming components, we have our uh, three components that we're sending. So exactly like we defined in JavaScript, there's the audio, there's the video, which is audio and camera. And then we have our data channel, which is this web browser input. In the context of this script here, uh, I've actually kind of built this slightly custom, customized for us. And this is built off of the web browser channel input receiver that was preloaded in with Unity and their examples. However, and actually we can go ahead and open that too. So this is kind of the default that gets included with Unity. So really convenient for say receiving data, but it wasn't really good at sending data. And like I mentioned before, the data channel can be used both ways. So really simply, all you need to do is on your set channel function, save the channel in and of itself. The channel has a send function that is available to either send byte array data or string message data. And quite literally, all you need to do is call channel.send and pass in a message. So with that, now I can pipe data back to the browser or to receive data from, from the browser. And, and that's probably the most convenient way to start going about at least kind of doing that back and forth integrations between the browser and Unity. Everything else practically stayed the same with Unity. I mean, of course, if you wanna change any of the graphics and logic, you feel free to do so. But uh, at least from a getting started standpoint, that's really all you need to start kind of having the browser customized to meet your own application needs and how you can start tweaking the Unity project in and of itself to match whatever your custom needs are. So if you wanna add more cameras, this is how you would go about doing it. You just add more video channels, you add more uh, broadcast channels. If you want multiple devices sending data, you can create data channels from the browser that will end up mapping onto Unity and you can do this across multiple devices as we showed in our previous video before. And all of this is capable thanks to kind of the examples here that are set up that take a little a bit of tweaking to, to get your head around, but once you understand it, it's fairly easy to manipulate to your own needs. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I know we went over a lot, but if you do have any questions, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, would love to know what you would build if you had a scalable render streaming solution.
Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.